Yeah Network. So hi guys, my name's Nayana Mena and today I'm here on behalf of Yeah Network for the private screening and premiere of the legacy documentary film and book. We'll be hearing from the people that were part of the project of creating it and also hearing about the people that have come to watch. It's all about the evolution of the grime, rap and hip hop scene in Birmingham. So stay tuned to find out more. guys I'm joined with a very very special person to interview I'm actually joined with the co-writer of the book Legacy this is Jess Monroe um, first of all I just want to say a massive congratulations on putting it all together we've just seen the documentary film and we know that inside you know the book that you've helped to write there's loads of excerpts from like big names like Lady Leisha Miss JK yeah. what was it like getting them involved in you know writing the book Legacy you know Birmingham's a small city it's a huge city but it's a small uh, community of, of artists so yes. we all know each other so so in the sense of bringing them in and getting them to be part of it, that was fairly easy because we all speak to each other and we've all got relationships. And I think they realised the scope of the project and wanted to be involved. Yes. Um, and, you know, we don't have many things like this in Birmingham. So if you have an artist like JK who wants to speak about Birmingham and is proud of Birmingham, giving them this platform, that they're, they're all eager to do it. So it was, it was great. It was great. It was really... And it, it's difficult because every artist that we interviewed had so much to say and trying yes. to get that into like a double page spread or, you know, a, a, a couple of excerpts from the movie, uh, the film, was, was difficult because the stories are insane. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so talking about the stories, we actually heard a lot about how there was a struggle actually and how things have evolved. From your perspective, how have things evolved after hearing the stories of different people yeah. that were involved? in the project? Um, I think we're still in a stage with Birmingham where you know there isn't an infrastructure, there's no labels, there's, mm. there's one label or distro, there's a couple of managers, there's not m much of a, a, a music scene apart from the artists. So the clashes and things that they spoke about in there yeah. was, are so important still. Um, what has progressed is, is you've got people like Mr. Millions who've kind of broke through and they are able to bring other people through. Mm. Um, but I agree with what a couple of people in the film said where we still have to work a lot harder. Yes. Um, personally, I went, you know, I came to London and I managed a lot of artists, big artists in, in London, so I was able to sort of make my way through that way and then come back to Birmingham. Mm. Um, but yeah, we're still, we're still sort of building. I think it was still a long, a long way behind London, but we're kind yes. of starting off our scene. And, and that's why and they like are so really important. starting to take off. I think yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and 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 that's why something like this is so important because it gives the new artists a chance to understand what happened before them and, and kind of the journey of it. And so, as a woman, as a woman, I want to ask you a question about mm -hmm. that. Um, do you feel that women have had it harder, you know, trying to make their yeah. breakthrough in that sort of genre of music yes. in Birmingham? Yeah, totally. Um, I think. I mean, there's probably from a rap management perspective or sort of behind the scenes, yeah. there's always been me and Amina. So Amina was in the film, so she manages Moves and Smugsy mm -hmm. and A-Class. You know, I've managed, um, I still manage Stardom and I've managed uh, Morrison and yeah. Dutch Valley and OFB in previous years. So, but, but it, 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 there's always that, you have to work a lot harder to be taken seriously, mm. to be in a room with male managers, um, and even male artists to even take you seriously and, and especially when you're working with rappers a lot of these guys are sh you know they're sh street rappers yes they're from the streets they don't put a lot of faith in a female being able to manage their business okay as a manager so do um, you have to sort of disprove that day-to-day oh, yeah, totally. in your work totally. yeah. you, you have to go in above, above and beyond to prove um but i think that's where you know I'm perhaps cliche but I think women work a lot harder to be able to prove their position yeah. and that's why we are in my opinion better managers well I like that claim it and claim it and yeah. let them shame it <laughs> <laughs> and so I guess one of the last questions I want to ask you was what was your aim with this whole project obviously we spoke yeah. a lot about the legacy the history of Birmingham's music scene yeah. what was the aim of it what is your aim with the book so I think um, firstly it was to thank and give a platform to the people who've come before um, and you know, like like we've said, and it's it said in the documentary, 
they weren't making money, those artists then. It was, you know, it was before the days of social media, so they didn't really get anything from being part of the scene. Yeah. So this is almost like a giving back to them wow. and the, the people who pioneered. But then I think it's also something that the new artists can look back on and think, we have actually done a lot in Birmingham. Like, we've got a lot to be proud of. Um, and maybe give them a bit more of a push to either keep going or to, to try and break through. So when we did the Birmingham premiere, we had, you know, a lot of the artists that came, a lot of yeah. producers that came, said that it gave them a bit more of a kick to, right, we've still got a lot to do. Like, yeah. that was the legacy up till now, but now we're going to make the legacy we've got even to bigger. we keep pushing. Yeah, yeah. so that, that, that was always it, really. Just give a bit of platform and, and give a push to the sort of next generation as well. Beside me now, I have Desper Robinson. He was definitely a familiar face within the documentary that we've just seen. He is the CEO of BE83, and it's a record label, which I'll let him tell more about before we go into the interview. But if you just want to share a few words about your role inside the documentary and... Yeah, the so company. I've been around in the Birmingham scene for a long time. So um, currently, I'm currently a manager and run a record label before I founded Stay Fresh which is one of the the biggest grime crews that came out of Birmingham at one point and done a whole lot of like documentary filmmaking and that kind of stuff so absolutely well thank you so much for sharing all of that and we saw that in the documentary but for the people that didn't see that mm -hmm. what could you tell us about how you know the music scene in Birmingham has evolved over time what can it's, you tell it's us about evolved how evolved tremendously it's got to the point where there was no money to now there's a little bit of money circulating mm. around there's artists that are, are big now like Mist, Millions, JK, Lady Leisha where at one point we didn't have any artists of our generation that had made anything out of themselves. You had like, obviously, Jamelia before and UB40. But in terms of like rap music, there hadn't really been any acts to break, but it's, that's changed since then. So. And so you mentioned that it hadn't really been done before and mm. that it's something that sort of came out of the woodworks and yeah. you guys made a name for yourselves, especially in Birmingham. Yeah. Do you think that's still something that's continuing to happen to Oh this yeah, day? no, definitely, definitely. There's still like kids that are starting to break through. Um, there's a kid called Zeno, who's, who's got a track that's like going viral on TikTok at the moment. There's um, a few kids like Spora, yeah. T Rose, there's a new generation of kids like popping up now. Absolutely. So it's um yeah that, that generation's gonna have to prove themselves. But <laughs> they are coming through so hopefully they do. Absolutely and do you think that those people, the new people that are coming up, are taking inspiration from the people that have come before them? I think so. I mean I think they they do and then they obviously they have their they draw from their own inspirations too. So where 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 we were our generation doing our thing, I think they look at that a little bit and they also take a lot from what's happening now. So Absolutely. I want to say, you know, they're standing on our shoulders, but I know they're, they're breaking new ground for themselves also. Well, that's the perfect balance. They're striking mm -hmm. the perfect balance yeah. then. And so one thing that they mentioned quite a lot, especially yourself as well in that documentary, was that, you know, they felt like they had to prove themselves, especially to people from London. It was almost like yeah. we have to do it bigger and better and badder yeah. because we have to work twice as hard to get to certain positions. Um, so how do you think they sort of overcame that? We just, we just put in the work, man. We were just put in the work, we were just very loud and just created moments and movements. And we, we, we had like groups of 15, 20 people moving around the country. And yeah. it, it got hard to notice when everybody's got a Stay Fresh t-shirt. And so it's like, <laughs> it, it, it became a thing and we really put on for them. Absolutely. And I know this is going to be a bit of a controversial question, but we have to bring it up. As a female, as a lady, I need to ask about the females in the industry. Yeah. Do you think it was harder for them to break through into the world of hip hop, grime and rap? I definitely think so. And especially, I think somebody raised that about Leisha on the documentary yeah. as well. And I think her own lived experience, she tells you, it's been difficult for her. And then people around her said the same thing. So I think Leash did a lot of fighting. Like I recorded one of her first songs and she did back in the day. Yeah, so oh, amazing. I've seen how far it's taken her to come to where she is now. Um, so I do think females have had it harder. But look now, like the, the game is very different. I think it's a very female-led or, or, um, industry at the moment. There's a lot of things going on. You've got your sexy red, you got your staff, you got all these people. So um, I don't think it's the same as it was before. But people are still having to fight for their positions. Absolutely. And so, last thing but not least, do you want to tell us a bit more about what you're doing now? Obviously, you said that you were working with Stay Fresh. You've got B83 now. Tell us more about that. What's going on now? Yeah, man. So I do management. I manage JK, um, Daps on the Map. So we manage it through Axe, through um, B83, uh, run a record label as well. So Zeno, the track I just mentioned, is actually on our record label, so I'm promoting. Come on, promo. Um, <laughs> and that's going well at the moment. So just that, man. Just kind of like finding new talent, yeah. developing people, and just helping them kind of like build their careers. That's what I do. We have just come out of the screening of Legacy. I mean, it was just groundbreaking. And I'm joined here with Fiasco. She actually featured inside this documentary, and she was telling her verdict on, you know, the whole grime scene within Birmingham. So after coming out of there, what was it like seeing yourself on the big screen? It was very awkward, but I got used to it in the end. Like, I've, this is like my third time, my third premiere now, so 
I'm used to this one. Yeah. The first time um, I see myself on the screen, I was like, oh my god. Like, you know, when you film it first and then you, when it gets edited, you don't know how it's going to be presented. Yeah. It was presented very well and I'm very proud. Absolutely. And so you were actually a part of the whole evolving scene. Mm -hmm. How do you think things have changed, especially in Birmingham in terms of music? How has things evolved? How have things changed since you've been part of it? Okay, so when I was a part of it, like we said um, previously in the um, Legacy um, documentary, it was all um, pirate radio. Um, so, and we never really had um, internet, mm. so things were like word of mouth, um, we had to hand out CDs, travel places, so yeah. it wasn't like how we've got internet now where you can just send something over online and it goes like viral, nothing right. like that. So would you say like there was actually challenges with that, how it was back then, it was, was it a lot harder to break through and make it mainstream? I think it was a lot harder, but at the same time, if you did bro break through, you know, they actually, there were fans, they actually yeah. were feeling your stuff, so... It wasn't um, a lose-lose, it was a win-win, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. And so, as we know, we know that grime, rap, hip-hop is kind of like an underserved mm -hmm. sort of market. It's kind yeah. of a niche thing and it's made just sort of an urban thing, yeah. specifically just for black people. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that nowadays, hip-hop music, grime, rap, all of that sort of stuff, do you think that they've found a way to make it to mainstream? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, like, if you go to most of the, um, say, like, wireless, mm -hmm. yeah? The crowd is white, predominantly white, isn't it? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So they've crossed the barrier now, haven't they? Yeah. Like, somebody said it to me, like, the music that um, they're playing now, it's lawyers kids are listening to it. Does that make sense? It's, it's, no, it's exactly. the lawyers and the doctor's kids, so it's crossed over mainstream. Definitely. So you do definitely feel like it's gone mainstream now. Definitely. It's gone global, if anything. Yeah. And so one thing that we did definitely see within that documentary was, mm -hmm. you know, people talking about how things have changed from the past mm -hmm. and how things have, you know, kind of changed and evolved to now and the present. And so what's one thing that you want people that are watching this video to know about what's going to happen next inside the future for the music scene in Birmingham? I think music's coming home to Brom. Um, never like before, like I've never seen so much Birmingham talent just yeah. on the screens, it's amazing and from what's been done before to what's been done now, it's yeah. just amazing. I'm just excited for 2024 and beyond. I'm joined here with another trailblazer. Right beside me I've got C4. How are you feeling after seeing your face on the big screen, all inside Legacy? <laughs> 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 to be honest, yeah, it was a long time ago that they shot my scene, so I look much different now. So I was just thinking, ah. Oh, I wish I had an updated shot, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But, nah, jokes aside, it was really, really um, good to see all of that. And I'm just happy to be a part of it, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So you mentioned that it was a long time coming since long they filmed time. your scene. So yeah. how long do you think did it take to kind of put this whole establishment together? Oh, it took years, years of planning, years of filming. They updated it a few times. They got more new footage. So some scenes you would have seen recorded, they were done like maybe like four years ago. Mm. Some scenes were like, why, last year? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we had a few deaths last year, R.I.P. Bama B. And obviously mm. some of the artists mentioned that, R.I.P. Bama B. You know what I mean? So yeah. some of the shots were recent. Um, so I wish I was part of the recent match, but <laughs> you know, I didn't get the call, but yeah, it's cool. Big up, Daniel. No, yeah. but it's still great to see you in there. And yeah. so you actually mentioned off camera that you travelled all the way from Birmingham. Yeah. And so I want to ask you a question. As a Londoner, how important is it that, you know, things like this documentary and the book that's being released in Korean Book Legacy, um, how important is it for putting Birmingham on the map in terms of the music scene? I think it's sick because I feel like people that um, are trailblazers in London they need stuff like this to talk about as well. Mm. If we're just doing things, little dotted things in Birmingham, they might not get mentioned, but all of us together as a city, it's always powerful. I mean, even um, the set that we done with Spyro, yeah. when all of the MCs came together, that created waves in the UK. Um, mm. So I feel like every time our city comes together, it creates a big wave in the UK. So yes. I just feel like that is important, that documentary is important. And I think it's going to do big stuff, you know? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so you mentioned that it was all about the teamwork that put your city on the map. And so I want to ask you more about the collaboration side of things. Do you feel like in today's music scene, is there still that element of working together and being a team and collaborating, or do you think it's every man for themselves? Um, it's a bit of both. Um, at the moment, a lot of people are linking up and doing stuff. Um, but mm. musically, I feel like there needs to be a bit more. Um, yeah, there needs to be a bit more. But I think yeah. this documentary is good for you know, maybe artists that aren't really active to kind of see that, mm -hmm. see where we've come from and get that, that energy and that boost to be like, you know what, we need to carry on, we need to continue the story, you know what I'm trying to say? So 
yeah man it's gonna be it's gonna be a mad um wave when is this dropping this needs to drop asap you get me like <laughs> the people want to know when this is dropping you absolutely get me? Yeah. absolutely and so i want to ask you another question about how the music scene in birmingham has evolved in the time that you've been in it and to this present day how have things changed i mean we did hear a bit about it in the documentary but for the people that haven't already seen it how have things changed um i feel like things have kind of gone a bit quiet, if I'm being honest, um, in terms of the waves that are happening. But I feel like our city is very, very, ooh, what can I say, like street yeah. music, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, okay. So like the grime stuff, the, the drill stuff, whatever. There are little dots of things happening, but as a scene, I don't think there's enough going on. That's why I said mm. I feel like this documentary is important. It will kind of revive the energy in Birmingham. So it's going to revive the energy in terms It's going to revive the energy in terms of the music scene. And also spread awareness about all of the greats that have come That have come before, it. yes. Yeah. And it's a nice base for people that don't know about Birmingham to see a bit of, you know, a lot of history, actually. Mm. Um, and for them to take our city serious. And can I just say personally, I feel like it's important to do this in London as well, mm. not just isolate ourselves in Birmingham, because we already know our story, but the rest of the UK, they need to know our story as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, they have to spread it, I mean? spread it wide and, and far. And on that note, as a Londoner, what's, uh, I guess, a brummy piece of lingo that I could learn to sound and give me street cred when I arrive there? You just say, all right. <laughs> all right. Wait, how am I saying it? How am I saying it? Give say, me... all right. All right. Am yeah. I saying it all right? Perfect. I feel like I sound like I'm from Essex. No, I don't you're know saying if... it perfect. You're saying yeah? it perfect. Yeah, all yeah, right. yeah. You got your little twang to it. All right, yeah. All all right, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I love that. And so, C4, tell us, where can we see you next? Where are we going to see you next? So, um, to people watching, because this is a worldwide thing, you know what I mean? So, I'm going to be in Texas for South by Southwest. Amazing. So, that's next month, March. Then, I'm putting on my first London headline show. That's going to be at Camden Assembly. You're going to be there? I'll come. Oh, yes, right, I'll show up. I'll show up. So you're going to be there as well. Um, it's going to be a mad thing. I'm bringing out some special guests from London, some of your legends. You already know that I'm bringing out some of the people that you've seen on the flyer, like Logan Sama, Big Boy DJ, Big Mikey, who was all over that documentary, mm. Doppy, he just got nominated for a mobile, Amazing. Um, Hitman, one of my G's from Birmingham, another legend, um, and yeah, there's going to be bare special guests, so C4 headline show, mm. Camden Assembly, the 4th of the 4th, 24, it's going off, blood. So guys, it's just been an amazing evening. We've heard from the people that created this film and book, and we've also spoken to some of the people that have just come to see the screening of Legacy. It really has been a blast. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you stay tuned. You like, comment, and subscribe to Yeah Network. I've been Ayana Mena, your host, and we shall see you soon.